Hello Java developers! Man, it's good to see you. Hope you're having a good day. My name is Matt Rabel and today I'd like to show you how to use Spring Security to implement a client credentials flow grant. That is a flow that's defined by OAuth and it's one of the seldom used ones. However, it allows you to communicate between two servers and not have any like users involved so it can be very handy that way. Let's giddy up! So this screencast is published on a blog post that we published back in May of 2021, but recently updated for Spring Boot 2.5.6. And if you're going to go back to the top here, you can click on the GitHub repo, and there is a demo.adoc that I'm going to use as my script for this. And adoc stands for ASCII doc. I have a fancy plugin that if I toggle it, looks plain. Do that and it looks nice so I'll put that on the left and what we're gonna do is you know just show you how to use Spring Boot and Spring Security to implement an OAuth flow with client credentials and we will set up a server that basically is protected by OAuth and then we'll go ahead and create two different clients one using a REST template and one using Spring Boot's web client so if you want to learn more about like client credentials and how all that works and Spring Security 5's core classes then go and read the blog post here and I might have some IntelliJ Live templates that I use, and I'll warn you when I do that, but I'll basically just type a bit of code and it'll spit out a bunch of code, and so that works pretty nicely there. So I'll put my terminal on my right, and the instructions on the left, I already have Java 11 installed. If you do not, I recommend using SDK man, and then you can do SDK install Java, and it looks like it's using 17, but I think I'm still using 11. Yep. And then HTTPy, which will give you the HTTP command, as well as HTTPS. So those are both very handy. And then uh, the Okta CLI. So I have that installed as well. And if you don't have it installed, you can get it from cli.okta.com. It'll show you how to install it on Mac, Linux, and Windows. And we're going to start by running this command to retrieve the pre-configured starter project for the server using Spring's Initializer REST API or start.spring.io. And you might be wondering, well, why are you using curl if you told us to install HTTPy? So I will use HTTPy right here. Well, I'll go into the downloads directory here and do it here. And so this is going to hit starter.zip right here and use 256. We're going to name it secure server and it's going to include an OAuth2 resource server web, security, and the Okta Spring Boot Starter. So then I'll open this up in IntelliJ. And then I'll open up the main demo application class. And the first thing I'm going to do is configure security. So this is one of my IntelliJ shortcuts. So we're going to enable global method security. We're going to extend web security configurer adapter. This is just using Spring MVC. If you're using WebFlex, it might be a bit different. And then authorize request. Any request needs to be authenticated. And we're going to set this up as a resource server, which means if you were to hit it in a browser or with a CLI tool, you'll get a 401. It won't redirect you to log in or anything. If you wanted to do that, you would have to do OAuth2 login there. And then we'll also set up a, a simple REST controller. So this uses pre-authorized to say it's got to have the scope of mod custom. It's got a get mapping and get message and just prints out the user's name. And you can see all the imports there in case you're not using an ID and did need to copy and paste those or just import them. And of course, you can go to the source code and get that from the, the GitHub repo if you like. And then we'll create an OIDC application on Okta. So I'm going to do Okta apps create service because this isn't a web app. It's not a spa app. It's not a native app for mobile, it's a service. So server to server, right? And we'll just name it secure server. And then wrote that information to a .octa.env file right here. And we'll go ahead and copy this. And we just need to copy those values from the octa.env. Now we have a fully running server that should be secure. So we can go ahead and MVN Spring Boot run. And look at that, we got a plus exit on the uh, MVNW file there. And then once that starts up, if we were to try to hit it with HTTPy at 8081 slash secure, 
you'll see that it returns a 401, right? We're not able to access that because we don't have a valid job. So we can add a custom scope to our authorization server. Remember we had that scope defined in that controller, this mod custom, we need to add that. So when we do send a request to this from a REST template or web client, it will have that scope defined. So we can uh, run Okta login here, and then that'll give us where we need to log into. I was already logged in in this browser, so I didn't have to sign in. And then we can go to security, API down here at the bottom. And then if you click on the default authorization server, scopes, and then add a new scope and call it mod custom. You don't need to define anything else, but you can if you want. Now we're done with the admin console and we can create a REST template command line application. So I will close this IntelliJ instance and clear this and CD up. And we'll just grab this curl command here. And this will create a new app with OAuth to client and web. Those are the only two things it includes. And so we'll open that in IntelliJ. Then we'll start by creating an OAuth client configuration class. And this is where my live templates come in handy again. This is an OAuth client configuration. You can see configuration class. And we have uh, we have issues. It won't resolve string. Come on, you're smarter than that, IntelliJ. So I got to open my module settings here and say, hey, it's, uh, I don't know why that SDK 15 is messed up, but 11 works. And then if we were to look at the class, we can see it pulls in all these various values, right? A token URI, a client ID, secret scope, authorization grant type. And then it creates the client registration for that. And then a client registration repository from that. And then an OAuth to authorized client service. And finally, a authorized client manager and service using all of the other beans. And then that client manager can be used in the command line runner, which we will implement in the demo application. So just take a look at that. This is implementing command line runner. So one of the slick things about Spring Boot is you can create CLIs as well. And so we pull in this authorized client service OAuth2 client authorized manager, authorized client manager. Man, it's got client in there twice. Well, Spring always wins for the longest class names, right? And then we have this run method that retrieves the authorized JWT with that client registration. And then it uses this authorized client to authorize it and it gets an access token from it. And then it prints out everything else. And then it will also make a request once it gets that access token to our secure server, which I believe is still running on 8081. So the next thing we need is to modify the application.properties to contain all these values. And the biggest mistake I made when I was practicing for this was I replaced this with the issuer instead of keeping this V1 token. So make sure and keep that. And then we can copy everything from the other project, which I believe I already closed. So let's reopen that. We got the issuer here, or actually we just need the domain. And then the client ID and the client secret. And you'll notice it uses a grant type of client credentials. It has that scope defined. And it also says Spring Main Web Application None. And that tells Spring Boot not to launch any sort of web application. Since this is a command line app, there's no reason to launch the default Tomcat server or anything like that. Now we should be able to try it out. Uh, one thing I did want to show you is a pretty slick thing you can do with Maven. If you go down here to the bottom, you can say default goal is Spring Boot Run, and then you don't need to type that every time. So you can just do you know, MVN, you don't need to do Spring Boot Run. Back in this window, we need to make sure this guy's running. And I do need it on there because I didn't define it, right? And then once that started, we can go here and run our REST template client. That will obviously go get an access token from Okta, and then it'll call our secure service with that access token. And you can see that worked. It printed out the token and it also replied with welcome and the uh, subclaim from the access token in there. So that's pretty slick. Uh, the next thing we can do is create a web-based 
client application. So the first example is Spring MVC. A web client is part of Spring WebFlux, and there's two different ways you can use Spring WebFlux and Web Client. You can use the command line runner just like we did, and then you can also use a web client and a scheduled annotation to basically make things happen on a schedule. So this annotation allows for a variety of scheduling options, including cron style. It also allows the use of web client and its non-blocking glory. So we'll create a new web client project. I'll just minimize that one. Go back to our terminal. And again, we'll use start.spring.io. Where did that command go? Well, we got it over here. OAuth to client, web, and webflux. And you don't have to specify a language or type of Maven project, but those are the defaults and you know sometimes it's good to specify defaults because if the defaults go away or they change then you know things wouldn't work as expected so we'll open that up in intellij and then we'll create an oauth client configuration just like we did before for the rest template And this one is very similar. It's configuration class, pulls in all those values, the token URI, client ID, client secret, builds up that client registration, and then it creates an in-memory reactive client registration repository. The cool thing is you can use those client registrations then to create a new web client, and it requires a lot less code than the REST template. So this is, you know, 48 lines, and if we wanted to tighten it up, we can make it, you know, get down to 46 with the extra line break at the end. And let's see what this one is. This one's, you know, 65. So a little bit of a savings there. And then we can go and modify the demo application to be that CLI. And again, this is much simpler than the REST template. We have configuration, Spring Boot application. Uh, we have auto wired that web client there. IntelliJ doesn't like it, probably wants me to do a constructor instead. So there we are, and now we're doing it as a constructor. And you can see every five seconds, it'll do a scheduled request to that secure server on 8081. It'll retrieve the body and put it into a string and you know print that out and then also when it first runs right it'll make a request and get that so it'll make a request you know print out welcome and then every five seconds it'll do another one so now we can copy these from the rest template put them in here because nothing really changes so we should be able to use all those the same and then of course we could also do this default if we wanted and then we could just run mvn And so you'll see that does the first one, the welcome, you know, using the command line runner and that run method. And then every five seconds, it makes another poll and, you know, calls it again and prints out, you know, the response there. So pretty slick. And you can tell the relative simplicity of the web client is better than REST template. And so Spring is basically moving in this direction, you know, using web client and deprecating REST template. So make sure and, uh, you know, explore web client, learn more about it. And you don't have to use it with WebFlux. You can use it with Spring MVC, so it's pretty slick that way. So you can find the code for this on GitHub in the Okta Spring Boot Client Credentials Example repository. And then if you click up here, you can go to the blog post and read that as well. So this has a lot for information about, you know, the Spring Security 5 core classes and uh, talks a lot more about how client credentials works. I didn't really cover that because I just like to show you how it works, which I think is very powerful. If you like this screencast, follow me on Twitter at mrabel. You can follow my team on Twitter at Octadev. And of course, Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Smash that button at youtube.com slash octadev. Thanks for watching today, and I hope you have just a fabulous evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you are. Cheers.